Hey guys, my name is Matt Hernandez. This is Framed Up, and today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of taking a plate image anytime you're doing a portrait shoot. Okay guys, so let's just jump right in here. So we're in Lightroom, and we've got our portrait of our soccer player here, and then right next to it we have the stands behind him. So as I said, this video is on the importance of taking a plate image and how that can benefit you later on. So a plate image is basically just a picture of the background by itself. Anytime you're taking a portrait, this especially comes in handy with team portraits when you have a lot of individual pictures in a row with the same background. Um, you know, you can take that and then, if, especially with a picture like this that's symmetrical where I've got rails on each side where he's, you know, I've got a ramp behind him, then, you know, sometimes if a player's maybe a little bit off center, it doesn't look quite right. So this will allow you to recompose them relatively easily in Photoshop. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. And it can also benefit you other times too with regular portrait sessions. I remember one time I had a senior picture shoot with a soccer player, had him doing a rainbow where he was flipping the ball up behind him, behind himself. And so I got a good action shot of him with the stands behind him, symmetrical with the stadium lights on and everything, one on each side. And then he was a little bit it was a little bit tilted, a little bit off center, so I took a plate image just straight on at the very end, and then I was able to just cut him out very easily using the quick selection tool, select subject in Photoshop, and then I could just move him around and put him in the in the other background. The white balance is gonna match that way, and it just makes it tons easier. So, okay, so let's get going here. So we've got our subject. I'm gonna hold shift and press the over key. So I've got both of those selected now, that, that subject in the background. I'm gonna control click, I'm also on a Mac. And then we're gonna go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Give it a second to open them here on top of each other, okay. So we've got our subject, and then we've got the background. So you can see they don't quite line up. Now basically what I had him do here was I took the portrait, I was on a tripod, and then I had him step out of the frame. I took another picture with the light still on. Uh, and it did move a little bit obviously, but I didn't, I didn't refocus, which is important because that will mess up the background blur or bokeh. So it, it would be different. The depth of field wouldn't match. So this way, it's going to be, it should be pretty close to exactly the same. You can see that there's some light hitting the rail here where it wasn't on his picture because I had the, the light camera left, but you know, that's not a big deal. So, okay. Since they don't line up, you could do a couple things. You could change the opacity and move the top layer around so that it, um, like you could put it on 50% by pressing five. So 50 over here on your layers and the opacity and you can move it around like that. Or, um, which that's gonna line up perfectly because I took them consecutively, but if you're doing team pictures, it may not be consecutive. So I'm gonna press zero to go back to 100% opacity. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna hold shift and select both layers. And then I'm gonna press command G to group them and I'm gonna name these originals. And then I'm gonna press Command J on that group to duplicate it. And then I'm gonna turn that one off. That way we have the original copies here in case we need to make, in case we get you know, a little bit down the line and we, and we mess them up. Because we're gonna do auto align layers. And so that can bend the background a little bit. And so I, I wanna make sure that I have the originals intact if I need them. So let's open this up the copies and then I'm going to hold shift and select both of them and then go over to edit auto align layers and then I'm going to select the first one under projection that says auto I'm going to select vignette removal and geometric distortion and I'm going to press OK and then Photoshop's going to work and hopefully line these up exactly where they need to be so let's turn the top layer off yep that is pretty much perfect okay Good deal. So now you can see that there's some background showing because it, it distorted them a little bit to make a match. So I'm gonna press the C tool for a crop tool and then I'm up here on the top left, I'm on original ratio. So I'm gonna grab the corner and hold option. So when you hold option, it's gonna, it's gonna transform this based on this control point in the middle. So it's gonna suck everything in there. So I'm gonna go till that, till that locks on the bottom the, where his, the portrait is bottom of that image is. We've got enough room on the top here. And then it looks like we've got more room on the left side, so I'm gonna line this up with my arrow keys here. Okay, that looks pretty close. Hit enter. I don't have delete cropped pixels checked so that everything's gonna stay intact. You can see it left a little bit of room here, so 
Let's crop that one more time, just so the bottom. Now I'm gonna press Command Zero. Okay, lined up good still, and then hit Enter. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna click on the top layer. I'm gonna press W for my Quick Selection tool, and then this should work pretty well because we had a little bit of an edge light here, so you can see, and hair light, so you can see that there's some definition there. He's got dark hair, so the background is underexposed. If I didn't have an edge light, then he would blend into the background, his hair would, and his ear and his shoulder here, and that would be a lot harder for Photoshop to cut out because it wouldn't see the edges as well. Like down here, it may have a little bit of trouble. It still should do a pretty good job, but the hair especially would be a pretty big issue. So if the, you want to keep that in mind when you're using this technique that you want to have some sort of edge light so there's defining you know, there's a difference in the in the subject in the background, or you can just have a, a lighter background too. So let's just go to select subject and see how this does, which that's exactly what I thought. It did a really great job. It didn't quite get all his form, I can tell. That's okay, we can, we can fix that in a minute. And it missed a little bit there, but for the most part, it did really, really good. All right, so now I'm gonna go to my refine edge. So I'm gonna press Option Command R, and then it's gonna bring up the, the, this dialog here to refine the edge. So I wanna make sure that my, that my selection is good. So I'm gonna press Z for my zoom tool. So we're gonna select this second tool here, which is the refine edge, edge brush. And so if you hold control and option that, and go mouse left or right, it makes your brush bigger or smaller and then up and down makes it softer or harder. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit soft, not 100% hardness, and then I'm gonna paint over the edges of his hair that it didn't pick up. Now over here on your settings, I've got my view set to overlay. I've got red for my color and then it's at 28% opacity so I can see the background. I've got a radius of four pixels, smart radius selected, and then shift edge to minus 12. And then I've got my output set to new layer with layer mask. So it's gonna duplicate the layer and put a mask on it. So I wanna paint here with this refine edge tool over the edges that it didn't pick up. And every couple seconds, I'm gonna pick my brush up so that it doesn't, I don't get too far across and then mess up at the end and have to do the whole thing over. So I just wanna get a little bit more detail on the edges here of his hair so it looks a little bit more realistic. But keep in mind, the point in this is that the background is the same as the original. So it should, it should match pretty well. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this selection because that's not the point of this video. It's more being able to, I'm gonna get my brush tool here underneath that and then draw his shoulder back in here. This is a situation where a Wacom tablet would come in really handy, which is normally what I use. I'm using a mouse right now, but that gives you a little bit more precise drawing ability. I've got an Intuos Pro uh, small medium and large too big. I don't even know if they make the large anymore, but okay. We just want this to look believable. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect because some of this is in the shadow anyway. Okay. And then one more time, I'm just gonna click over this area with our fine edge brush. Okay, all right, so now we're just gonna hit okay. All right, so now, okay, so when I shot this, I'm gonna hold shift and click on my mask so you can see there's the original. I should have shot him a little bit off center so that you could see, you know, the, the point in this that I could recompose him to the middle where I wanted him. I actually had that happen recently with the football team and I was shooting on their ramp and going up to the stadium just like this and, and I had a couple players that were just a little bit off and I'd taken a plate image so it allowed me to, to do this really quickly because it, just, it bothers me when you're doing a symmetrical shot and it's just barely off. So anyway, you can see that he's, he's already pretty much in the middle anyway, but I'm gonna press V for my move tool. You can see like maybe, let's say he was right here. So, okay, one more thing here. You can see that because we did the align layers, the auto align layers, that it, it, and then we cropped it. So it chopped off part of the image and I didn't hit delete crop pixels. So the edges of this original, the portrait are still in, in here. They're not masked because they were out of frame. If you hold option and click on the mask, you can see. So I'm just gonna select, uh, let's do the marquee tool here, just the regular square marquee tool. And then I'm gonna go up as far as I can there, hold shift so the little plus comes up so I can 
add to my selection. So now I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna press X so that we flip our colors here because black conceals and white reveals on a mask. Make sure you're on the mask over here in your layers and then hit delete. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted white in the foreground to delete it. There we go. Okay, so hit Command D to deselect, and then, so I'm gonna move this selection up a little bit because it didn't quite get that. There we go. Command D to deselect, option click again. Okay, now let's zoom in, make sure that that, yeah, this mask looks great. And it's, and you could see it wasn't perfect, but because the background was the same, a lot of this area that wasn't perfect was where the Photoshop couldn't detect the edge as well, but it doesn't matter because it's all in shadow. Like right here. Yeah, that looks really good. So press Z to zoom out and then press V for my move tool and then you can see you can move them around wherever you want. All right. And if you really want to get technical, you can select your marquee tool and select the edge of the rail here, the inside of it, and then mouse over and let go. And then if you control click inside the selection, you can do transform selection and it's gonna automatically put that little control point in the, in the direct center at 50%, and you see the two boxes on the square too, on the bounding box. So you can click over here in your rulers, Command-R shows your rulers. Click and drag to make a guide, okay? And then hit Enter and then deselect, Command-D. And so now, be for my move tool to go back. So now you can see if you wanted to line him up directly in the middle of those, right between his eyes there. Left a little bit right there, and then Command colon will will hide your mask. So there you go. Now we're directly exactly in the middle, and then go over here to your layers, and up here on the little menu, these little lines on the right. I'm going to click that, and then go to flatten image, and then you would go to file save or Command S, and it's going to save it right back into Lightroom, and then you're good to go. So that that does it. Uh, that shows you why it's a good idea to take a plate image or a background image whenever you do portraits. If you think it's something that you might need, you don't have to do this for all of them, but especially with team pictures, it's always great to do that. And you can use them later for composites too, if you want to. So that's also, you know, a secondary benefit to doing it. So I actually recorded this video first with the soccer image. We had it cut, ready to go for YouTube. And then I did this shoot, this senior shoot, a few weeks ago, I guess, and I thought this was a good opportunity to add in a second image for me to go over really quickly and show you how you can do the same thing with an action shot. So you can see here, I, I took a picture of him diving into the end zone and because I didn't want him to get hurt, we put a pad down from the land on. You always want to keep your athlete safe. And then once I knew I had the shot that I wanted, the very next frame, I had, I basically stayed in the same position and then I had him move the pad out of the way, make sure everybody was out of the frame. I kept the light on so the light was, uh, so it was the same, so it was still with the turf. And then I took a, another picture without refocusing from, you know, trying to stay at the same angle. So the previous example of the soccer player on the ramp, I had it on a tripod, which ideally you would want to do for something like this, just so you can make sure that there's no movement. But sometimes, you know, Maybe you don't have a tripod or don't have it with you or, or you decide to do the composite, you know, last minute and you don't, you've already shot the, the image and you don't have it with you, you know, whatever. Um, so this is an example of using it without a tripod. I just tried not to move. So I've got these exported already. I just wanted to show you these and capture one real, real quick. So we've got them exported there on the desktop and then I opened them in Photoshop. So here is the background or the plate image. And then here is the picture of our athlete. So you can see it's pretty close to the same angle. If I go back and forth, you can you can see it's slightly off, but it's close enough. Focal length the same. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm positive I didn't refocus or anything like that. So what we're going to do is get on the image with our athlete. Press Command A to select all. Command C to copy, and then go over to our next tab, and then Command V to paste. Okay, we're going to press V for the move tool and then set my opacity to 50% on the layer with him on it. So just hit five. Okay, so you can see it is down into the left a little bit. So I moved, I moved slightly before I took the plate image. So I'm gonna press Z to zoom in and then V for my move tool again. So I'm gonna line this up. 
gonna press my arrow keys now to get the lights. You want, you basically want to get one point of the image for like a reference, I guess, to put the control point so that you can have that is, is the area that you transform from. So what I mean by that is we're gonna line up the top of the light here because it's the top right, the top right of the image is a good reference point. And then if you press Command T to transform, this little center point here is where when you scale the image, make it bigger or smaller, that's what the, it's gonna come out from this area. And we're gonna option click right on that light right there. So that that's the point, that's the center point where it comes from, where it, where it grows and shrinks to. So we're gonna hold option here and we don't really need to make it bigger yet, but what we're gonna, we are gonna do is rotate it. So I wanna keep, we've got the light lined up. And we know that I wanna keep this stadium. You wanna find something in your image that if you need to resize it just a little bit, just to make sure that it's gonna scale properly. And so you can see this maybe tilted up into the left just a little bit. So if you mouse over the bottom left of the, of the layer that you're, that you're transforming here, the little arrows come up that means that you're going to rotate it and it's going to it's going to use this point that you just changed to rotate it from so otherwise it would just dug up from the middle so you can see here what it's doing okay now let's try to line up that stadium so it's straight the lights are still off a little bit and that's okay so now i'm gonna i'm gonna abandon well let's just see if we resize real quick Okay, that it's making it too big. So it looks like it's about the right size right now. So I'm just gonna press my arrow keys and get that stadium lined up a little bit closer. Okay, so then I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna hit zero so that it goes back to 100% opacity. So you can see it's not exact, which we want it to be as close as possible. So what we're gonna do is go to the background layer and press command J to copy that layer. I'm gonna hold command and select both layers. Then I'm gonna go up here and go to edit auto align layers now when this little dialog comes up you want to hit the auto button up here on the top left hit okay all right so now it should be that was close enough that it should be able to line it up pretty straight so let's turn him off and then turn it back on so let's, let's click on just that layer and press b for the move tool and then five to go to 50%, you can see it's laying right over it, so that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna press zero. So you can see the clouds moved a little bit, but everything else is pretty close. Okay, so now all we wanna do is press W for the selection tool. The ob so it's on the object selection tool right now. We can go to quick selection, but you wanna go up here to select subject and you wanna press the arrow on the right first, go to cloud for better results, and then hit select subject. All right, now he is selected. And let's zoom in to see how good we did. You can see it's missing part of his pads there. Now, this is lining up really nicely because I took these consecutively. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of variation. The clouds moved a little bit, like I said, but that's it, all right? So what we're gonna do is just, we're not gonna refine it. We're just gonna mask it as it is. Okay, so I'm gonna go down, so it's, got my, it's selected. So it's trying to pick up objects when it's making that pink highlight there so we're going to go over here to the layer and then just hit the mask button so now it made a mask now you can see you can go over here and hold shift on your mask and click and it's going to show you the original it's going to show you with no mask so it didn't get everything so the easy way to fix that is get your brush tool since it lined up so well i'm going to make sure my I'm, my edge is nice and soft and then i'm going to put my flow and my opacity both to 100 Blending most normal, and then we're just going to paint in around the edges here. Now be careful up here by the light, which I guess, yeah, it's a little bit off. You can see I just got part of the light. That, that actually wouldn't matter. It still looked fine, but we want to avoid that as much as possible since it's not 100% perfect, and it doesn't have to be. And this is a good example of that, actually, because if it was perfect, that would be ideal. We weren't on a tripod, no big deal. So I'm just, I'm at 100% just painting around the edge of him just to make sure we get all of the detail. Now you have to be sure if you're doing it like this that I could have refined the selection and made it a perfect mask. There's no need for that. that that's a waste of time for this because it, it that's just as good. 
So you want to turn it off. And you want to make sure there's no halo around him. Like if the, let's say that the sun, had, if it was a sunny day and the sun was behind the clouds maybe, and, it, and then it came out for the plate image, like it was maybe the sun was behind the clouds for the picture of him. And then the next frame that sun came out a little bit, that could change the sky a little bit possibly. So then if, in that case, if you paint it around him like that, it could create like an outline. So you have to be sure that you're not doing that. But this, that wasn't the case because these are, the clouds stayed pretty much the same. So if you press up, option and click on the mask you can see that i made it you know it's it's basically feathered around the edges but i pretty much just expanded it so that you can see see all the detail on you know leg hair arm hair that kind of thing so if you press shift again so there is without the mask and there's with it and then zoom out all the way there's without it and there's with it okay so now we want to crop it so i want to use the plate image for the crop so if you hold command and click on the layer that you want to use as your crop, it's going to make that, anytime you press command and click on a layer, it's going to make a selection. And so then I'm going to press C for my crop tool. And then I want to uncheck delete cropped pixels at the top. I don't want content aware selected either. I don't want any, any kind of constraints, anything. I just want that layer to be cropped. That's the original image. So use that selection to make it. Now I'm going to press enter and enter again. And now we are lined up and we've got the pad is magically gone. So you can see they're doing that. That's before and after and cloud shifting a little bit, but everything else is exactly the same. So that is how you create a composite using a plate image for an action shot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you got something out of it, if you learned something, I would really appreciate it. If you would like it, subscribe. To the channel share it hit that little bell so that you know when i post new videos and there's going to be a lot more content like this to come so i'll see you next time